Hello knitters, Barbara Benson here. I'm an independent knit and wear designer who also likes to make videos here on my YouTube channel, Watch Barbara Knit. If you'd like to know more about my knitwear designs, please check in the description below. And there you will find a link to my Ravelry designer page where you can see all the patterns that I have and you can get one to knit up for yourself. Also in the description below, you will find a link to the Watch Barbara Knits Facebook group. Uh, we would love to have you come over and join us. We can continue the conversations we start here on Watch Barbara Knit. And one of the bonuses to that is we can share pictures. It's a closed group, but I will approve your request. Today, I realized that I didn't do a pattern tour video for my new shawl pattern. Uh, I don't know what's up with that. I released it and uh, it has gone over really well. And I think I showed you it a little bit in a previous video, but I wanted to show you the whole thing and talk to you a little bit about it. So you know what? It's funny. I'm trying to figure out which is the right and the wrong side. And it's actually kind of tough to tell. So which I made a video on telling the right side from the wrong side. So when you knit this, make sure at the beginning to put your uh, locking stitch marker on the right side. So here it is. This is, let's, let me go backwards. Rolly, rolly, rolly. Uh, there we go. <laughs> it's this big. Oh, oh, oh. There we go. It's been folded, so it has a little crease in it, but this is, it's a nice big crescent shaped shawl. And it is the second in my, what I'm calling face framing lace series. The idea being that typically your lace is gonna be on the trim at the bottom. And I was like, what's gonna happen if I move it up to the top so that the lace is around your face? And this is what happens. The first one was, um, oh, what I call Onoclea, and this one is called Argironetta, or Agironetta. I don't honestly know how to pronounce it. It's what I get for choosing all of these Latin names, but what you get is the laces up here around your face, and I think that is pretty cool. And since it's a crescent shaped shawl, it's super easy to wear. You just put it on and it stays on. The garter helps with that. That brings me to that point. So the way that this pattern is structured, let me make sure I've got the right side, is it starts here. And so you start with this little point, you cast on a very small number of stitches, I think it's three. And then what we're doing is there's a setup. And so you work through your setup and that is establishing this lace pattern right here, you can see. And it's only like to here. So you're doing this and then after the width is established, this is how wide the lace is, then I started adding in garter. So what it is, is this lace just repeats and the garter gets bigger and bigger. So you get the same lace across the band across the top. Now what's awesome about that is once you finish the setup, which is only really about this much, that is really the only part of it you have to actually like focus on. It's not particularly hard, but you know, you have to pay attention and check. Once you get into this part, it is literally a two row pattern. It's a right side and a wrong side. And because of the way the shawl is shaped, it's adding two stitches. It adds two stitches on the right side and takes off one on the wrong side. So it shifts two stitches to the right every time. So that means when you start, you've actually offset the same pattern. So it creates this wonderful, what we determined is a bubble texture. It uses double yarn overs, which is not hard. The only thing about double yarn overs you have to remember is when you're coming back on the wrong side, you have to, when you have the two yarn overs around your needle, you have to knit into the first one and purl into the second one so that you get both of those stitches. Now, when I was working on this, I posted it, posted it to Instagram and Facebook and asked y'all to help me come up with a name. And when I do that, I'm not necessarily going to take the name 
that you said, but it really, you guys, y'all inspire me. You make suggestions and you say, this looks like this to me and this looks like that to me. And one of the general consensus was that, that you've got the bottom and the top and a lot of people said it looked like waves or bubbles or something like that. And that started me down the rabbit hole and I eventually after Googling some, discovered that there is, and, I, and the thing is, is I remembered once I found it, there is a type of spider called the diving bell spider, right? And what this diving bell spider does is it makes a bubble and puts it around its abdomen and it lets it live underwater. So it's an underwater spider that has a bubble on its butt. <laughs> And once I read about it, I'm like, I totally remember seeing some nature show about this. Like when I was a kid, um, it, it must have been like Richard Attenborough or one of those super serious English guys that make everything seem incredibly educational. And I'm like, that is fun. And the Latin name for the diving bell spider is Agyroneta. And it's the, oh, it's the genus and it's the only spider in this genus. It's the only spider that has this bubble technique. And so I thought that would be fun. And I really like using Latin names because they sound cool and they look like pr they're pretty words, but they don't automatically bias the knitter in one direction or another. If I chose a word that was like a real water-based words, then people might feel that they have to knit it in blue or something like that. This way it gives it a pretty name and I think a gironetta sounds beautiful, um, but you can put your own creativity into it and choose your own color. And I'm gonna put a link in the description below to it. In the description below, you'll find a link to the pattern and I'm gonna put a link to the project pages because I did a sort of test knit on this because it wasn't a full-blown test knit because a full-blown test knit usually involves people starting and finishing the shawl before I release the shawl. But because of the way this is constructed, once people got to about here, you know it's gonna work because it's only two rows. You've got the setup and then you repeat two rows until you run out of yarn. That's all it takes. So you go and you go and you go and then you end up this edge, this big long edge here. Let me do it slow. Do, 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 do. Da, 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 da. I get accused of going too fast sometimes, so I'm going slow. This long edge is the bind off. So, and this is the tiny, I blocked it into a curve. Some people have blocked it into more of, and you can barely tell where the point is. The point is right here. So this is one of the edges and this is the bind off. And because it's in garter, you can almost not tell. I don't know if you can see it. There, see that little point? I blocked it into a curve. Some people have blocked it into more of a point. It's whatever floats your boat. Where was I going with this? Oh, so the test knitters. So a lot of people, I had I think 10 or 11 test knitters who did the cast on and the setup and did enough of the body so that they're like, yeah, yeah, this works totally. They gave me their feedback, but you gotta go look at the project page and see the different yarns that they use. Now this yarn, I absolutely love, and this pattern was specifically designed for this yarn. It is in Zula Silken. It is a 50-50 silk wool blend. So it is perfect for the summertime. Cause look how light that is. Floof, floof, floof. It's perfect for the summertime. And, but you could also do it in a heavier Anzula yarn or an all wool yarn or even a cotton yarn. And if you go and you look at the pattern pages, you'll see the other yarns people have chosen. And this pattern, because it's got the garter and the really open lace, it works really well in a variegated. Somebody did it in a speckle. It really lets your yarn shine. So if you have a problem child skein, this might be a good choice for you because the solid of the garter lets that color play but the lace still brings enough detail to it to make it interesting to knit and visually fun. So make sure to check in the description below to see those pattern pages. Um, 
also because it's an open-ended shawl you know you just cast on you could do this in sport weight you could do it in worsted weight you could do it in lace weight the only thing you're going to have to do is adjust your needle size if you go up in uh, yarn weight you need to go up in needle size I would recommend going at least two needle sizes over what you would do to get a, a dense uh, stockinette fabric so with fingering weight you're looking at like a six so if you wanted to go with sport weight do like a seven if you're doing uh, worsted weight maybe start with a nine and so you have a nice open gauge because you want drape in a shawl wow tangent <laughs> so this is our gyronetta um, and as I showed you so look this is I believe the right side and look the right side and the wrong side, really, there's not much of a different. There are definitely a zero difference in garter. Garter is the same on both sides, but this lace looks pretty much the same on both sides. So it's fairly reversible. I'm just really happy with it. This is, Silken is under, it's fingering weight, it's under 400 yards. So this is a lot of shawl for not a lot of yardage. You want a bigger shawl, you get two skeins. <laughs> Oh, color, I should tell you, the colorway here is lapis, which I just, it's so pretty, it's so blue. I'm so happy with it. I'm just making a mess and playing with it. You know what I could do? Watch this. Instead of playing with it, there, it'll just stay. I love, I could even pull it, what else? I could, there, that looks kind of cool. It's sort of like a scarf whatever and this is something you know if you don't want it to be super warm but you know if you want to do it in something heavier it could be awesome in alpaca Ooh. so i hope that you have enjoyed this look at my new shawl um please let me know in the comments below what you think and maybe if you have the perfect skein of yarn or you know what i love doing i love vicariously yarn shopping because it doesn't cost me anything so i will put a link into the description below to anzula so you can see the over a hundred different colors that they have and if you want some help picking out a color i'd be happy to chat with you in the description below and find the perfect color for you if you like this video please give it the thumbs up click that like button and if you would like to be notified whenever i upload a new video please subscribe to my channel and select notifications thank you so much